Hey my good friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. So you want a Challenger, right? But you need an SUV or maybe you want a Charger but you need to tow your boat. You can't do that with either of those two cars. This might just be the answer. This is the 2017 Dodge Durango RT. It has the Hemi that you still would get in that Charger or Challenger. It has rear wheel drive but it's an SUV. On the matter of styling, the Dodge Durango RT does set itself apart from the standard Durango line in a couple different ways. First of all, we've got body color trims here and there all around. Here, these are 20 inch wheels and a pretty nice looking satin finish that especially with this color, they really sort of blend in almost in a body color look. Body color, it continues up front here around the grill. The grill surround, the lower fascia, and especially down on that lower fascia, there's a more aggressive splitter down there that's also body color. One thing of note you can see is a big radar sensor that's down in that lower grill and that's because this does have the package with all the advanced driver aids. Headlights on this one, they're also blacked out and these are the upper line headlight on this, an HID projector beam headlamp. Not xenon, not LED, but they do look pretty nice and they have a really nice LED driving light. Coming down the side of the Durango, one of the things you can see that really does make it look a little bit longer, a little bit sleeker with this one is that one inch lower ride height with the RT suspension. Now out here at the back, this has what they call the racetrack tail lamps, full length tail lamp assembly and it has an LED light up that's very distinctive at night. I don't know if you can see it too well here in my daytime picture, but it really does look good and it's something that's really becoming sort of a Dodge trademark, at least lately on the performance products. Down in the lower fascia you can see we've not only got dual exhaust, but there's a removable panel down there, perfect for when you're using a trailer hitch. Up here at the top, you also have a built-in spoiler that's standard equipment. One thing you can say about this interior, it's very eye-catching. Red leather seats, not very often you see that in an SUV, so I really kind of like that. You can get it in other colors, obviously, but this is a pretty well upgraded interior for the Durango. I've got leather seats here, perforated, of course, and they do have controls right here on the main screen to operate those. They're both heated and ventilated, and I have a heated steering wheel, so we are outfitted for not only hot weather, but cold weather as well. It's a pretty comfortable place to sit. These seats are a little bit firmer than I might expect. They're pretty well adjustable, but um, I still have found them to be pretty firm during my week. But they do hold you pretty well with good side bolstering. And finding a position here that's comfortable has been a bit of a challenge. But once you get it set, you can set it down here in the memory right there on the door. So that's always a good thing. There is a sunroof here. That was an option, a standalone option here in the Durango. And the outward visibility here is, I would say, middle of the class because we've got a long dash that goes out in front of you. And then you don't really see a lot of that hood out there unless you happen to be sitting up high. I'm about 5'9", and I usually keep my seat pretty low. If you had your seat up, you'd have a little bit more of a commanding view there. Materials in here. The dash itself is a nice soft touch material, as are the tops of the doors. But if you run your hand around the interior, uh, you do find a lot of hard plastics. Not out of range for this class, but it is definitely a vehicle that's priced quite a bit below this in its entry level models, as evidenced by what you see here. The switch gear of a reasonable quality, but it is, again, um, it is engineered and designed down to that lower price point. Storage. One thing I want to point out here is this is very well optioned. It has the Blu-ray home theater system here in the back. And so because of that, in here, half the storage bin here is gone for that Blu-ray player. So that's one thing to point out. If you go for that option, you're going to lose quite a bit of storage there. The console here has a nice big area for your phone. And the plugs are right there. There's a lot of ports. There's even an SD card place for you to put that in there and get some additional storage if you have songs or videos, things like that. Um, there's just a lot of stuff that's right there and easy to get to. I like the way they've done that. The one thing I don't like is this has the rotary dial shifter. Now, they got rid of what used to be the traditional shifter. Now there's the rotary dial. There are paddle shifters up here. But this rotary dial, just especially in a sporting vehicle like this, the RT, it just doesn't have that intuitiveness. And it doesn't solve the problem of rollaways. There have been a few times this week where I was sitting here and it wasn't all the way, all the way over in park and I opened the door and the car started rolling. It's just not as intuitive as a lever, period. Uh, and the other thing is there's no place to rest your hand. And I'm just one of those people I like to drive along and rest my hand there, especially with this high armrest here. I've been doing this all week long. 
Now there's a lot going on back here in the back seat and I will point out there's a lot of ways you can get the back seat here in the Durango. This happens to have the optional captain's chairs here and down below it's got what they call a mini console which here basically it's a big piece of plastic with cup holders in it. No storage in here but what I do like is the fact that these are actually pretty comfortable seats. They are a little bit low as you can see my knees are perched up which I tend to complain about sometimes but they're well bolstered so you don't find yourself trying to tip around a lot. There's armrests that fold down on these seats. Legroom as you can see is actually pretty good here. These seats are about halfway forward, halfway back. I'm 5'9 and they're set for my height. Here I do have the fold up entertainment system. There's actually two of these and it's pretty cool what they've done here. As you can see right here, there's inputs for this screen. On the back of that seat, there's also inputs for that screen. So you can use a Blu-ray player that's in the center console to play on both, or you can plug in individual items for back here. And you know, you can have one person with a game player, you can have another person with a DVD player, something like that. They can totally do their own thing. And that is very cool. And of course, you have wireless headphones to go with each one of these. So Silence is golden when they're occupied. And there's a lot of amenities back here. I've got heated seats. These two captain's chairs are heated. Down here in the back of the center console, I've got HVAC vents. There's USB ports. And there's also a 115 volt outlet. Better still, I've got controls for the HVAC back here. Full rear air, vents up here in the ceiling, all the way back there into that third row. Now the third row, let's check that out. Always trying to make sure you guys can totally get the full dope on these vehicles. So what you're seeing back here is the third row seat. I'm an adult. I'm five foot nine. As I said, sitting up there, I, I seem to fit back here pretty good. My headroom, I've got about two inches above my head. And these seats here don't necessarily move, but I have plenty of leg room here. So a reasonably good size adult can use these seats back here and getting in and out of here, not such a terrible thing. And there's a nice armrest back here, cup holder. And as I said before, there's vents back here, up here in the ceiling. So even the third row passengers are gonna be reasonably comfortable back here, even if they're adults. Now that's a good thing. Now these seats do of course fold down. The third row, 50-50 split. The second row, these are captains. So they just fold down individually for a pretty flat load floor. It's up a little bit high, but flat it is. Underneath the floor back there, you're going to find there's actually a little bit of a storage area, and that is also where the 12 volt battery is. There is a spare tire. It looks like there isn't one here, but it is underneath the vehicle, but it does exist. The interior, for the most part, does impress me. I like its design. It's very simple. It's tastefully done, at least for my taste. I love the red leather seats, and as I said, you can get them in other colors. Material quality, middle of the class, I'd say, and storage could be better, especially if you do get that Blu-ray player. So the interior gets four out of five stars. When it comes to infotainment, this has the top of the line Uconnect 8.4 inch touchscreen. It's got navigation, a full suite of apps, and a lot of the controls for things, as I mentioned before, like these heated seats, they're in there. Luckily, there are hard controls here that back up a lot of the things you would normally have to page through menus. You've got volume, you've got tuning, and the HVAC controls are there as well, and they're also doubled up there on the touch screen. The navigation, is, as I've seen here, has a nice big map that still gives you a bank of controls underneath, so it's nice and visible. It lights up well during the daytime. It has good graphics, and using the touch screen itself does have a pretty good feel to it. It responds to your touch, which is always a good thing. This also has the Beats audio system, which is the top of the line here. Almost, you can get the Alpine in one trim grade above, but the Beats actually fits this vehicle well. It's got a good bump and bass, and it doesn't seem to overpower the door panels when you really crank it up, so it's got a nice sound. So this infotainment system, for the most part, does impress me. Connectivity features such as Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, hmm, not here. So in that way, I do have to score it at four out of five stars because it is missing a couple things. What's under the hood here, of course, being the RT, it's the 5.7 liter Hemi V8. It's been around quite a while with Chrysler products and Dodge. Here, 360 horsepower and 390 pound-feet of torque. It has an eight-speed torque flight automatic transmission. And it also does have the cylinder cutoff that lets it run down on four cylinders when you don't need the extra power, like when you're coasting on the freeway, when you roll into the throttle, it really pops those cylinders back on pretty imperceptibly. That does help the fuel economy here, giving it 14 MPG city, 22 MPG highway, and 17 MPG combined. So the big question always is, how does it go? <laughs> huh? 
and 60. Woo, okay, speeding. All right, so here's the thing. It sounds awesome, doesn't it? Nice V8 growl, and it really, it really growls under that hood. The transmission does a very good job of delivering shifts, and I do have it in sport mode. That's why you can hear the engine continuing to rev a little bit. Um, the thing is, is this is a very heavy SUV, 5,000 plus pounds. So because of that, not quite as quick as you're going to get in the Challenger or in the Charger RT, but it does give you that V8 fun that you're going to come here for. It's just a little bit of a trade-off because the thing weighs a lot. Now, that said, again, transmission very good. There's paddle shifters here, even though I didn't use them because this dial sucks. 2018, that's going away, by the way, I'll point out. There is a T-shifter coming for everybody that hates that stupid thing down there, and it will have an auto stick shifting capability. But the thing that really surprised me about this more than anything this week is a fuel economy because it's rated to 17 combined. But even though I've been doing the speeding thing, just like you just saw, a lot, I still managed 19 MPG this week with it. So I'm pretty darn impressed with this powertrain. Five out of five stars. So we've established that this does have some muscle car cred when it comes to what powers it and how it sounds, but how does it handle? Well, we're in a 5,000 pound plus SUV. That's the first thing. It does have the lower suspension. It does have all the good stuff on the spec sheets, a short long arm, independent front suspension, a five link rear suspension, independent of course, big 20 inch wheels, low profile tires, all of the stuff that you'd expect on a muscle car but it's still an SUV, right? I mean, you throw it into a corner and you can feel this thing, it's got weight. That's really where it's at. Now I will hand it to them. They've given it a pretty good sharp feel when you're driving out on a back road at speed. A lot of that does go to the 20 inch wheels. Steering doesn't have a lot of feel in it. You don't get a lot of feedback that really tells you what's going on in terms of the tires, but the ride is solid, it is quiet, and I suspect when you're towing a trailer, it's going to be pretty stable, which is part of having the SUV thing. So when it comes to handling, you know, we're not quite like a muscle car in the sense that it's sporting to where you can really go crazy, but you can do more with this out here on a back road than you can with the standard Durango. So chassis comes in at four out of five stars. On the measure of quality, I was actually quite impressed with this. It was much better than I expected it to be when it came to fit and finish and the overall look and feel of a lot of the materials. Now, we did talk about the interior materials just a little bit on the less expensive side here and there, but overall, very impressed. Quality comes in at four out of five stars. On the topic of safety, very important to me, even though I don't use it as part of my ratings for my test drive, as you can see here, not a top safety pick with the IIHS, and that's simply because of that marginal crash on the small overlap test. It does perform pretty well in the other tests, and it does offer um, a pretty advanced level now of crash prevention systems, but until they can actually get that test performance up, this is where it falls. Well, there you have it for the Dodge Durango RT. Now, I had a lot of fun driving this thing, and just like I said at the opening, if you really want a muscle car, but you need an SUV, and maybe even something to tow your boat with, this is a pretty nice choice, and really nothing else like it on the market. The closest thing out there is the Ford Explorer Sport. Not quite the same animal. It's, it's very nice in its own right, but this is just really a different thing. Now, the price on this one right here, as you can see, just under $50,000. You can spend a lot more money here all-wheel drive. You can put on a lot more options and really push that price up closer to 60. But here, I think we're at a very good value at this price. I put that at five out of five stars. When you put that in with everything else we've already talked about, we're four stars for the review. Pretty good. I'm Sam Haymar for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Now before you go, I've got to point out one thing, and that is, I've heard the notion from a lot of people that, oh, Dodge is letting the Durango wither on the vine. They're just not paying much attention to it. They're not updating it. They're not doing anything new. Well, you'd be wrong. They just unveiled last week at the Chicago Auto Show the SRT, an even more powerful, crazier version than this one. 475 horsepower, 6.4 liter Hemi V8, the 392, that big mega motor that you're going to find in a lot of other muscle cars that Dodge builds. Crazy thing, all-wheel drive, and it even tows more, 8,600 pounds. you got to check it out. I did a video at the Chicago Auto Show right there. Click right there, see the entire thing, and of course, as always, I ask, click right there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Either way, stay tuned.